Hello everyone and welcome back to Royalty Soaps. Before we begin, if you are not following me on Instagram and on Twitter, you should because all of the cool kids are doing it. Today we're going to be making cucumber melon soap and the fragrance oil I am using is from Nature's Garden Candles. It is cucumber and melons. In my opinion, it smells exactly like the Bath and Body Works fragrance. It's a really good dupe and it performs pretty well in cold process soap. This is going to be a layered soap. It will probably have a hanger swirl through it because last time I did a layer soap, which was the Rainbow Magic. If you haven't seen that video, I will put a little link right here so you can go watch those layers being created. But the last time I did that, you guys really like having the swirl in it like more than just the layers stacked on each other. So we'll try to do that if we can. Okay, so as usual, I'm pouring my lye water solution into my oils. If you are interested in using the recipe that I am using today, it is down in the description box below. And I am using 120 ounces of oil because I am putting some soap frosting on these. Now I'm going to blend this up until light trace. This being all blended up, I am now going to split it off into four separate buckets here. So something I thought would be kind of fun to do for this soap is for one of these layers, I'm gonna make it significantly thinner than some of the other ones. And the one that I'm making thinner is the pink color. I'm doing four different colors, so I thought maybe I should try one being thinner than all the others and we'll, we'll see what that looks like. I don't think I've ever done that before. <laughs> so the colorants that I am using today are New Leaf Mica Powder. I'm using Summer Crush Mica Powder. And I'm using Yellow Vibrance and Orange Vibrance. All of those are from Nurture Soap Supply. I've put the proper amount into each container, so now I'm just going to mix it up gently with the stick blender. So after mixing all of these up, I think this pink is looking a little bit, hmm, just not the right color for the soap that I'm trying to make. So I'm going to add a little bit of watermelon punch to see if that will brighten it up just a touch. That looks a little more like what I wanted. So now I'm going to scrape down the sides of these containers and I know I haven't added titanium dioxide to any of them. It's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> this feels like this is the first time I've done that like ever, but I'm not adding titanium dioxide So these will probably stay pretty close to their actual color for melony colors You've got like a honeydew melon color and then you've got like a cantaloupe color And then we've got like sort of a watermelony color and I don't know what sort of yellow melons there are <laughs> I just thought that would look nice. I do know there are some yellow watermelons though. So I think I'm going to line these up like this maybe? Go yellow, pink, green, orange. Does that look about right, maybe? Yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do orange, then green, then pink, then yellow for the colors. I have added the proper amount of fragrance into my colors here. So the first one that I'm pouring is the orange. Now because I'm doing this one in layers, I will be scraping out each of the containers between them. Okay, so there's the orange in, so now I'm going to mix up the green. Okay, so I totally forgot to press the record button. <laughs> so I am pouring the green soap now on top of the orange. I'm sorry, it's kind of hard to see whenever I have to hold a spatula in place. I use the spatula to kind of help break the fall of the soap. It will probably still move a little bit because the bottom layer is pretty runny, but because I intend on putting a hanger through it and kind of swirling it anyway, I don't really care. It's not that big a deal. Okay, the green is in now, so I'm going to mix up the pink and we're going to put that little thin layer on. When pouring the pink, I'm going to have to be really careful because you remember this layer is thinner than all the other ones, so I can only pour a teeny tiny bit on each loaf here because I'm not really sure how much I'll have to cover the entire surface area. So I'm only gonna pour about that much first and then we'll see if I have to move it around and 
make it work. Okay, I'm gonna come back and add a little more on this side because I had enough to cover everything on that side. And then to move the soap, I'm just gonna gently bounce my spatula from side to side, very, very gently. It's just gonna press that soap into all the corners. Okay, all the pink is in now, so I'm just gonna gently shake this just to make sure that the soap is kind of even. Then I'll mix up the yellow, we'll pour in that last layer, and we will put the hanger through it. Okay, so I decided to do something else. <laughs> like, just spur of the moment, I was just like, no, I should do something else here. So before I put the yellow on, even though I know there's a little bit here, I'm actually going to go ahead and do the hanger because I'm going to put a mica line. So I'm just gonna up and down, up and down up and down like that. That should be about five times, I think. So up, one, two, three, four, five. Just like that. Okay, so now I'm going to tap this down on the ground so that everything kind of settles and so that the top is flat once more. Now that I've tapped it down, I'm taking my finger with a paper towel on it, and I'm just wiping down the edges just a little bit. That way none of the mica that I'm about to put on there will stick to the sides. Hopefully, there will still be a little bit, but <laughs> we're gonna try to minimize the effect by doing this. And then for this mica line here, I'm going to be using Green Vibrance. This is also from Nurture Soap. Okay, so that mica line being done now, I'm going to clean up the edges of the mold just so that there is no green on my yellow portion. Now I will go back and clean up the molds themselves a little later, but I'm going to go ahead and put the yellow on, which has thickened up considerably. Had I been a little more forward thinking, I would have just left this yellow alone and not added the fragrance until I knew it was gonna be time to pour. As it is, I'm just going to ladle it on, and then once that uh, pink layer sets up a little bit more, I might try to move it around, but right now I'm pretty sure that that would disturb the pencil line rather greatly. I have ladled in my piping. It's still a pretty liquidy, but I really wanna make sure that I don't have any cracks in this piping because I am putting a mica drizzle on top. So I'm using the Royalty Soaps piping set available at Nurture Soap. When you get the piping set, you also get the piping recipe. I do not sell the piping recipe individually. You do have to buy the set. So I'm just going to put three little dollops across here. And like I said, it's still pretty runny, so you can see that those are smishing together really easily. This fragrance is so strong. It has smelled up my entire office and it smells amazing. And whenever I was looking at it today, I was totally reminded just of Bath and Body Works and whenever I discovered when I first started making soap that you could create soaps with duplication fragrances, like that wasn't something that I knew you were allowed to do, that people <laughs> created fragrance oils, you know, that smelled like a really big company. So when I found out, you know, that Moonlight Path and other fragrances like that were available, I freaked out. And I I remember a long, long time ago, it was probably in my first year still of soap making, so maybe 16 or 17 years old, I was on one of the forums and people were talking about Bath and Body Works and Lush and how you were a traitor <laughs> if you bought anything from them after you started making your own and after you were introduced to all the benefits of handmade soap and buying local and small business and it was really frowned upon in this specific group to purchase products from anybody that was bigger than, you know, like a cottage industry. And I remember in the group, I thought it was kind of like an open discussion. So I talked about like one of my favorite body mists that Bath & Body Works had, which was at the time, it was Sweet Pea. I really loved that fragrance and I loved that body mist and I had been using it for, you know, probably six months or so. And it had just been my go-to for like my perfume. And I made that mistake and I remember getting chewed out essentially by the people on that forum for like, I don't know, like I said, being a traitor or something. And I was so pressured, I was so pressured by it that I went that very day and threw away that body mist that I had because I just, again, I felt like I was a traitor to the world of handmade Bath and Body products. <laughs> 
And of course, since then, I have learned that just because somebody has a very strong opinion on something doesn't make them right. <laughs> I now buy from Lush or Yankee Candle or Bath and Body Works or any of my, you know, uh, handmade, fellow handmade shop owners and don't feel guilty about any of those purchases because it's my money and I can do what I want with it. <laughs> so let that be an encouragement to you to buy whatever you want. <laughs> whatever makes you happy when it comes to Bath and Body products or anything else, just get what you want and don't feel pressured by other people to feel bad about it. But thinking about Bath and Body Works also reminded me like the very first time I got anything from Bath and Body Works, I was with my mom and I'm gonna say it was like extremely late 90s or very, very early 2000s. So probably like 1999 to 2002 maybe. So the first thing I got from them, they had a line called like, I can't remember it's called like bath art or body art, but I will try to find a picture online of these products. And I thought about those today and I was like, those were the best. Okay, those were the best. And they all had names like Blueberry Blitz and, you know, Strawberry Showers and stuff like that. And then they had like body bath, like it looked like shaving cream, but it was like bath stuff, like a foaming body wash. And they had roll on glitter because then glitter was like, that's a daily accessory. That's not something you wear to a festival. You wear that, you know, anywhere. You wear that to school. Cool. Glitter. Glitter everywhere. Ah, those were the days. Man, would I be so excited if Bath & Body Works did like a retro throwback of that stuff and brought back that line just for a limited time. But, uh, you know, that probably wouldn't work. <laughs> On second thought, because the people that that appealed to when it came out were teenage girls. Like, that was like 12 to probably 15 or 16. And I don't think 12 to 16 year olds nowadays would find that very enjoyable. I don't think they would settle for a fragrance called Blueberry Blitz when they're used to wearing Armani. <laughs> Alright, so now that all of the piping is on top, I'm going to put um, some sprinklings here of all the colors I used on the inside. Um, and I've mixed them up with oil, so I'm just going to pull it up into a pipette here. And I'm going to do this kind of messily. Now, you know, sometimes I like to be really precise about this. I like put one drop. I do that on the Cirque de Bouquet. So, but I think this one will look really cool if it kind of just looked like paint splattery all together. And some of the colors kind of melded into each other. I just think that would look really neato. So I'm just going to do it like this. And there's the first layer of pink. Now I'm going to do some of the green. And these always show up so vividly if you mix them at a proper ratio. I like to do, now I kind of like to do one to one, like one part oil and one part mica because I think that that really makes it pop. The pink I did a little more oil than I did mica. So that one's gonna be a little more streaky. Now let's do some yellow. I am gonna be a little more purposeful with these next colors because there are some places that don't have any color on them that I do wanna make sure get some on there. Like right here and right here, some missing in that area. And now for the orange. And I'm not gonna put as much orange as the other colors because I think that I don't know. It just doesn't seem to fit as well as the other colors on top. Okay, so some more pink now on top again. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and finish off with the green and not put any more yellow or orange. Put that all around on top. Trying to do more drops now than I am big drizzles. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to put in the embeds. And the embeds I made, I molded with something from Wholesale Supplies Plus. It's like a tube mold. And then you can see I painted some little dots to kind of look like cucumber seeds. So I molded some white melt and pour that I put just a little bit of green in and then I painted the seeds on. So I think, at least on the ends here, I'm gonna put the cucumber in the middle and then I think I'll probably put it on one of the sides for all the rest of the bars. Yeah, they can squeeze in perfect right here. And I'm always partial to the end bars. <laughs> Anytime that I package up an order and someone gets an end bar, I'm like, ooh, you lucky, because <laughs> I like the way that those look a lot. I feel like this is one last summer hurrah. This is like the last summery-ish soap that I'm gonna be doing. It's actually a good scent for all year round, but the colors that I pick, they lean a little bit more towards summer. So now I'm gonna put them on this side. I think I might actually be able to use my multi-bar cutter for these because the embeds are so thin 
it's kind of hard to mess up. <laughs> okay, so all the embeds are in now, so I'm going to take my favorite glitter. This is White Diamond from TKB. It is just, it's such a versatile glitter. I just love this one. And I'm gonna put a very generous amount on top all across the soap here. And then we're going to spritz it with 91% rubbing alcohol. Let it sit for 18 to 24 hours and then come back to cut them up. So let's spritz this down real quick. Not a whole, whole bunch because I don't want it to move the mica around. And I'll show you guys a little close up. So this is what it looks like all close. You can see the little cucumber embeds there. Cucumber embed, that sounds very strange. <laughs> So we'll be back to cut this really, really soon. So we are back to cut this soap and the colors on top look really fantastic. I love how some of them have dripped together. So the pinky orange sort of made like a tangerine and some of the yellow and the green went together so it made a like lime green color. All of them melded really, really well. So this is perfect right here and I'm just gonna kind of make an indentation where I want it. And then I am going to cut this one from the side because I don't want to mess up any of the embeds. Okay, so I'm gonna push down very gently here and this is what it looks like on the inside So I have a little bit of a swirl. You can barely see it All of these colors are pretty faint this pink and this green and this tangerine But there is a bit of a swirl in there and then we have that green mica line Which is very very visible and then the yellow on top with the white piping and of course all the pretties on top So all in all, I'm pretty happy with this bar. The fragrance is really good. It's really really strong and that cucumber note actually stuck. You can actually smell the cucumber, which I honestly think is kind of a hard smell to capture and keep in a soap. I find that as things cure, those types of notes tend to go away, but I think it actually stuck with this one, which is pretty amazing. Oh no, Caleb. I have no question of the day. What? I have no question of the day. Would you rather relive the same day for 365 days, or would you rather lose a year of your life? Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, I don't know because I don't know how long I'm gonna live. If I'm like gonna live till I'm like 87 or something, just take a year away <laughs> right there at the end. <laughs> But if I'm only gonna live till I'm like 30, I don't know, because of some freak accident or something. No, I don't know. I have no idea. That one's way too hard. <laughs> How about you? What would you pick? I'd take a year off my life. <laughs> I'm not gonna live the same day over 300 times. You don't wanna pull a groundhog day? Yeah, it'd probably leave you so scarred. Yeah, it probably would. You'd probably be nuts by the end I of that. I wouldn't trust anybody or anything. <laughs> So if you want to participate in that poll, all you have to do is click the I in the upper right hand corner of the screen and cast your vote. I, I I have no opinion. I have no opinion on this one. That's way too hard, even though, well, actually maybe I do. After Caleb said what he did about like being scarred for literally life, I think I'd like to avoid that. <laughs> Thanks you guys so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. These soaps are going to be available on September 15th in the Etsy shop. The Etsy shop goes live at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. And until next time, I hope you guys have a lovely day and bye for now.